On today's show, I go on a weird rant about grace, compassion, and dharma while trying not to sound religious, even though most of my understanding must be filtered through examples of Jesus, Martin Luther King, and even Michael Jackson's song lyrics. We're going to talk about grace, compassion, and control, and Michael Jackson. Stay tuned to find out more. And welcome to the Dream Interpretation Podcast. I'm April Angel, and this is another half hour where we get to dive deeply into the dreams and lives of seemingly normal people on a hero's journey. I agree with Michael, who I'm sure you've noticed is not here today, that life is a hero's journey because coming to Earth and living here is a heroic mission and an even crazier mission than sending humans to the moon. Just my opinion, because think about the amount of surrender that our soul you had to embrace to simply squeeze your energy into a tiny new human that is heroic in and of itself and we've all done it if you're listening to this show you've done it and we're going to tuck into this i imagine the experience of being in the womb and being in a tiny new body when we're used to feeling infinite and limitless feels like being buried alive inside of a coffin, which is terrifying, right? What could you do in order to endure that? I imagine that we had to calmly remind ourselves to surrender and relax into it the entire time. I've seen dreams comment on this stage of the life journey, and we won't cover any of those today, but dreams address that trauma if you had a particularly difficult time with the task of lowering your vibration. And we have to lower our vibration to become physical and accept the veil, which is an illusion that makes us feel like we are cut off from God or creator and each other. And that separation is an illusion. We aren't separated at all, but the experience of it has to feel believable because we have to be all in on a singular individual perspective in order for our life mission to work. And I decided to bring all of this up because dreams are most often reminding us to reopen our hearts and let life in. And this is sometimes the most difficult thing to learn how to do. And it requires, again, surrendering any desire to control when things are most uncomfortable. And this is not about surrendering to abuse, by the way. It requires becoming aware of the ways in which our ego struggles to cling to control. And we will look at a few dreams that bring this up. Ultimately, we all do know how to surrender and simply accept because we couldn't have come here without surrendering in a massive way. It seems like it should be simple, but earth is a confusing and constricting place designed to be full of limitation because that is an extreme condition that is perfect for our growth. And learning how to allow ourselves to be as we are while feeling confused or powerless in these states is incredibly challenging. And we can shovel so much judgment onto ourselves while we're experiencing challenging relationships, roles, or projects. And this leads us directly to what we are here to do. We are here to find balance by confronting all of the ways in which we aren't loving and accepting not just of others, but of ourselves. Others really serve as a reflection of ourselves. And one of the commandments, here we go, we've all heard is to love your neighbor as yourself. And I believe this is half understood because what happens when you don't love yourself or you don't love everything about yourself? Well, that's the hidden opportunity for grace to expand within. Grace is mastered when we learn how to give it to ourselves. And if you've explored the deepest parts of yourself, and come to realize that no admonishing, controlling, or browbeating yourself will make your flaws disappear, then you are left with no other alternative but grace, alternatively known as compassion. And once you've learned how to give yourself grace and compassion, then you can more deeply love yourself and others. And this is the state that is also known as the Dharmic path in Eastern religions. Dharma, according to Google, is also described as an inner wisdom or a cosmic guidance that governs not only the individual, but the universe itself. And for a person to follow her dharma, all she needs to do is follow that inner guidance. And now I'd like to bring it all full circle back to the reason for this podcast, which is dream interpretation. We experience inner guidance at all times 
of the day and night. But if we have been conditioned in any way by parents, religion, or culture to ignore our inner guidance, our dreams will swoop in at night to offer us guidance about our guidance. <laughs> we're, we're offered guidance on guidance on guidance in life. So uh, let's look at some dreams that express this. Okay, so the first dream we're going to look at is by Emily. It's titled Alone at a Restaurant. I was alone at a restaurant waiting to be seated for a show. It was just me and a crowd of people. I had ordered dinner, but wouldn't get any because they had found me a last minute ticket. I followed into the restaurant where the show was with other people who were women and they were together, but I wasn't sure where to sit. I felt guilty being there. I was supposed to be doing something else. Then I was living with my sister, but she wasn't interested in me. She seemed more interested in other people. And I had the thought that things between us were not the same. And I felt sad. Okay, so first we see I was alone at a restaurant. That's a calling card for someone who's a counselor. Being alone in a dream is a calling card for a counselor. And we see other places in this dream where she feels like the relationship between her and her sister is not the same anymore. The sister is going to represent mom in this dream. That's how dreams work. She's the female. So she felt like things aren't the same. And we're seeing that they're also, she's sitting in this restaurant and like she had a last minute ticket. The ticket represents karma. And so it's her karma to have this experience and also to develop a counseling gift, which she uses for other people in her life. And she's going to use that gift to, and she's going to share it with people to help them. But right now at the time of this dream, the dream is bringing up the things that are, that she needs to heal in order to get to a place where she's following more guidance because what we see in this dream is that she shows up at the place she doesn't get any food like she had a last minute ticket so she's not she's feeling alone and left out she's the only one not getting a meal so that feeling of being left out is has stuck with her from an early age and that is what she is being asked to confront within herself and heal as a result of her relationship her earlier relationship with mom <sighs> and then she said that she felt guilty for being there. Like she was, what did she say exactly? She said, I was supposed to be doing something else. So what that means is that she's, she has this feeling in her where she feels guilty all the time, where she feels like even if she's doing something, she's not doing what she's supposed to be doing. So if this person is a writer and this, and this person is a writer, they'll be feeling guilty about writing and using their gift of writing, which they're meant to do. They'll be feeling guilty about using that gift because there's something else they're not doing. Like maybe she's, well, she is a mom and maybe she doesn't feel like she's taking good enough care of her kids at the time. And, and it's just like this guilt is holding her back in important areas of her life because no matter what she's doing, she feels like she's supposed to be doing something else. So that is something that her higher self is asking her to heal because it's hard to um, follow your inner guidance when that conditioning that guilt is kicking in uh, to hold you back. So she also said that um, I was living with my sister, but she wasn't interested in me. So that's mom. That's where this comes from. Uh, and she seemed more interested in other people. So that's uh, reflecting that this issue really comes from mom, mom not being interested in the dreamer. And uh, she's meant to counsel others. And it's part, the gift is part of her karma. And so she'll need to get to the root of her own issue and heal feeling guilty about being where she is uh, or not doing what she's supposed to be doing. And um, let's see, is there anything else I want to point out about this dream? Healing this is her life purpose. And she will be a wiser counselor once she does. So that's that dream. Uh, next, we're going to look at this one from Marie. It's called white tunnel room. I was in a small square tunnel of a room. There was a row of three booths on the left-hand side and the end of the tunnel room in front of me was a doorway to another building connected to this one. And I could see a lot of people through the doorway. The booths were high, low in height and the tables were rectangular and everything was the same shade of white. The walls, the tables, the booths. There were two people at the booth in front of me so three of us total, 
And while in the booth, I had to, I had used my black headphones and set them on the table. I imagine the black headphones on the white table really struck me. The image of the black headphones on the white table really struck me after waking up. Okay. So the white tunnel room and the headphones. So she is a channel. She's clairaudient and she's clairvoyant. And I say clairaudient because of the headphones. We put those in the ears. It's how we hear. And she is also clairvoyant because she says that she was sitting in the booth and she could see other people down the hallway through the tunnel and the tunnel represents channeling. So all of this dream is going to be talking about her channeling gift, which is part of what she is here to share. And uh, it's what the universe is guiding her to do. So, okay. So what, or I say universe, you can say God, you can say creator, you can say whatever you're comfortable with, but it's all the same thing. So um, she's being gu guided to embrace her gift of channeling, but we see the color black in the dream and we see the color white in the dream. This much white is telling me that this dreamer is controlling. And um, when we're controlling, we're not <laughs> being, we're not allowing grace. So when I say controlling, a lot of times it's not about other people. Sometimes it is. Sometimes we want to control our outer environment, but sometimes it's us controlling our inner environment, us controlling how we express ourselves because we wouldn't have been approved of earlier in life for expressing ourselves in certain ways. So no matter what it is, uh, this dreamer is being told that she's, her controlling nature is preventing her from embracing her channeling gift, which she is meant to commit to because we see the number three in this dream. There was a row of three booths. So she's being asked to commit to it. And she says, there's two people sitting across from her. Those two people represent balance. Uh, that's what she's meant to seek uh, in order for this gift to come in more strongly. And we see black and white together in this dream. So black and white is about right or wrong thinking. And um, I asked her if there was a certain way that she thinks channeling is supposed to work. Well, first of all, she definitely, she chuckled when I asked her if she's controlling because she, she admits that she is, um, in this regard, but, um, for her, she, she didn't understand that she was channeling the people, the people that she saw down the hallway. What did she say here? She says, there were two people at the booth in front of me, two, three total, uh, while I was in the booth. Okay. No, she's <laughs> okay. She says that in front of me was a doorway to another building connected to this one. And I could see a lot of people through the doorway. So I channeled that this was telling her that she has the ability to channel deceased loved ones. And she then told me a story that her father had passed and she was wondering if she could speak to him and she was trying to, and she was getting these little signs that she was, it was maybe working, but she, she couldn't believe it. So this dream was really telling her, like, you do have this gift. Uh, you just have to, <laughs> you have to tuck into it and let go of the black and white thinking that things have to be a certain way in order for it to be true, or there's a right and wrong way to do it. It there's, there's really not for this person. So the rest of other dreams would be telling her where this comes from, but that's what that one means in this regard. She's being asked to let go, go of the black and white thinking and commit to developing her channeling gift. And she is actually, okay, so let's go to the next dream. I'm going to look at this one from Francis. It's called Speaking at the Super Bowl. It's rather short as well. It says, I was a speaker at the Super Bowl. I gave a speech, but finished quickly because I realized I didn't want to be up there. After I felt embarrassed and ashamed, I ran into a woman who was important, the owner, and she seemed very happy with my talk. My daughter was there making friends and I was joking about all the people that she knew and how popular she was. She had many friends and I was happy for her. In the speech, I was supposed to acknowledge someone by name, but I forgot her name, so I didn't. Okay, so that's the dream. So she's a speaker at the Super Bowl. That's what she's meant to do. She is meant to be a speaker. She's she, And, and the, the football is about playing the game of life. And really there's no bigger football game, <laughs> especially in America, than the Super Bowl. So this is like, big for her. She's really meant to get into life and embrace the fact that she's 
a speaker that she's meant to be heard, that she's meant to have an audience. But what happens when she gets up there? She felt embarrassed and ashamed. So this is something that would hold her back from doing that. That's something that she really needs to tuck into and give herself grace about. She needs to let go of these issues. She needs to find out where they come from. from. And we see a daughter in the dream. So it's a feminine energy issue. It's most likely that this comes from mom because women are being, are showing up in the dream, but she has the owner of the studio come up to her and the owner seemed very happy with her talk. So that's a guide in this dream. And the guide is trying to give her something that her parent did not give her in reality, which was support <laughs> for in moments where, you know, she felt embarrassed or ashamed. And that's really, that's really a masculine energy issue when we're feeling our self-worth is not strong enough to stand in front of someone and deliver a message. So that all might come from mom and her daughter was there making friends and she's joking about how popular she was and how many friends she has. She does not have this experience in life. Um, so that's something that she might feel bad about. Uh, it might have been something that contributed to her feeling embarrassed about using this gift that she has, but she's meant to stand in front of people and share a message. And her guide is telling her like, yes, I'm happy. Like you're like, we're happy with you doing this. Like, please do it. And then she said, I was supposed to acknowledge someone by name and I forgot her name. So I didn't do it. So this is really her, like, she's meant to put herself out there. I think she's meant to make a name for herself doing this, um, being a speaker or a what do they call those? Like a, an orator. <laughs> so anyway, that's that dream. And it's clearly telling her what she's guided to do, but if her conditioning would hold her back, like she might feel really passionate about sharing something, but that conditioning just pops up and like a hook, it tries to pull you back. So, um, that's what she is being asked to go into the depths of herself and give herself compassion for, and then she'll be able to share that with others herself and her message. <music> Have you ever wondered how to unlock the wisdom of your higher self so that you can figure out your life purpose, why you're here, what you're meant to be doing, and what's keeping you off track? If so, then we have an exciting live event coming up this fall. Join us for a three-day intensive live virtual event from October 7th to 9th, where we will show you how to answer some critical questions like, how do I identify my unique spiritual gifts? And how do symbols show the solution to what is holding me back? And then what do I do next once I realize what my gifts are or what my obstacles are? We'll also show you how to avoid incurring karma by doing the wrong things. Sign up today at dream-analysis.com forward slash free to secure your free spot at this event. The first 100 to register will get a free copy of the color version of my book worth $35. You can't get this version on Amazon. We reserve it for course participants because supplies are limited. But now you can get it for free. So sign up today before seats run out. Again, the link is dream-analysis.com forward slash free. Sign up today and we'll see you there. The last dream that I would like to look at today is called, I'm just checking how much time we have. <laughs> it's called Michael Jackson on a moped. Okay, so Michael Jackson is outside of my childhood home on a moped. His hair is black and face very pale and white. First, he is on the road to the left of the house. Then he moves to the front of the house at the gate. His hand is taped or strapped to a white ticking time bomb. And he takes my hand and then he looks back at my sister, who's a little blonde girl, aged five, and says, oh, you're, you're the beautiful one. And I run back into the house and I'm telling everyone to get out of the house and I run and get ready to escape out of the back bedroom window. The window is floor to ceiling and I open it out. Everyone is just sitting around, not taking me seriously. And I'm wondering why won't they leave? There's my mother and her son and daughter sitting on the couch. There's a mom and son and daughter sitting on the couch and she's bringing them to the cinema. And she asks them if they will share their treats. And the little boy says, no way. 
then there's a blonde woman in a white dress kneeling on the floor in front of a TV and set. And she says she's had cancer many times, but her kids are okay. Kind of strange, right? All right, let's start looking at the meaning of this dream. Michael Jackson is outside of my childhood home on a moped. This is about channeling because Michael Jackson is a singer and that's what channeling, that's what musicians represent in dreams. So he represents channeling for her and he's outside on a moped and that's two wheels. So that's about balance. There's something about herself that she's being asked to balance uh, in so that she can embrace her channeling gift. I asked her what her opinion of Michael Jackson was. She did not, uh, she sees him as a child abuser. So this dream is really pointing out um, her, her bad view of her channeling gift at the time. This, this dream is a little older, so she's overcome uh, her, her beliefs since then. But at the time she had a negative view of channeling and Michael Jackson is representing dad because he's showing up with black hair and a pale white face. So there's like black and white thinking that is uh, being shown in this dream that the dreamer would have adopted from dad. And firstly, he's on the road to the left of the house and he moves to the front of the house. So it's saying that channeling is meant to, it's moving to the future. It's moving to the front of the house. So it's like channeling is sort of in the future. She's meant to, it's going to happen for her. And, but there's a white ticking time bomb strapped to Michael Jackson's hand. So the ticking time bomb is what she describes dad as. It's like dad had anger and it was like a ticking time bomb. You never knew when it was going to go off. So um, dad, therefore, from this dream, we see that dad's influence, he was controlling, he was angry. You never knew when dad was going to go off. And this has influenced this dreamer's view of herself and ability to put her gifts into the world. And then what happens? Oh, and he says, oh, you're the beautiful one. So I asked uh, about this and both parents show up in this dream because there's a mom and a male in the dream. And I asked her about mom, like, did she never hear that she was beautiful? She's like, oh yeah, that never happened. I remember one time mom gave me a, com a compliment for me looking nice in adulthood, but that never happened. So that's something that would have influenced her. There was no feeling that, you know, you're special. You're, you're beautiful. Like, there, there was none of that. No, no affirmation of self happening for her at the, around the age of five, which was a big deal for her. It's why it's showing up in the dream. Like it was just criticisms and no, no, you're the beautiful one. So then I run back uh, into the house and I'm telling everyone to get out of the house and I run and escape to the back bedroom window. Now, this is something that she said she actually did do in childhood. She would, she and her sister would jump out of the window and lock each other out. And they would laugh at each other for, you know, <laughs> their, the predicament. But then mom would get upset and mom was drinking more at that time. So mom would get upset and then they would get a beating with the hairbrush when they eventually came back in. So uh, it's just representing a lot of conflict that came from that time that uh, it was, had a, a negative effect on her still to this day. And the floor to, uh, window ceiling windows, the window that's floor to ceiling that represents her intuition. So she's got a strong intuition and she's meant to embrace that as well. And, um, no one was, I was, everyone was sitting around and not taking me seriously. That is something that she also experienced as well. She told me that she had a memory that she would just be in the backseat of the car, telling a story and talking, talking away, chatting away to her parents or her sister. And literally no one would listen to her. And she had a very vivid memory of that. So when you have a gift like channeling, where you're meant to be sharing messages with people that would have a bad impact on you because you're like, Oh, what does it matter? No one listens to me. That is a thing that she carried from childhood that was being uh, projected onto herself. No one listens to me and this gift, like no one's going to listen to me, even though she didn't even likely, I don't know if she even knew she was a channel at this time. She probably did, but it's like, this is what's happening on the subconscious level. Like, what does it matter? No one's going to listen to me. So, um, then there's, uh, um, mom and son and daughter sitting on a couch and she's bringing them to the cinema and she asks them if they'll share their treats and the little boy says no way. So she also has a healing gift. And at this time she, her subconscious was not willing to share herself in that way. Uh, she was, protecting herself. And she had the experience of wanting to just fix things. That's what she's doing in the house, trying to tell everyone it's time to go. It's time to leave. She's trying to fix it. She just, that was her thing. Like that's how she became controlling. She's like, if I can make everyone happy, if I can fix things for everyone, then I can be happy. And that's, that's a codependent nature. 
And she says that she does have that with her mom and her sister, or she did anyway, um, have that experience with her at the time of the dream with her mom and her sister. So, uh, and that shows up really strongly in this next part where she said, there's a blonde woman in a white dress. So mom was controlling and critical and uh, that she's kneeling on the floor in front of the TV. And she says, I've had cancer many times, but my kids are okay. So it's like, who says that? Like I've had cancer, but my kids are fine. Yeah. You would be concerned about your kids, but there's like no concern for herself at this time. So it's, um, she's, it's another example of her being concerned for everybody else, having little um, attention on herself in important ways that she needs. And that is, she's being asked to connect to her channeling gift and, and repair herself in all of these ways. So that is something that she has worked on. So good for her for getting that taken care of. Thank you so much. This dream, I said it was from Deidre. I hope I shared that. Um, oh, and she says at some point that uh, her sister was a little blonde girl at age five. So that means that this dreamer is actually a guide. And so it, it is important for her to be here sharing her wisdom. And first we have to heal ourselves. That's where we get a lot of our wisdom. Like we have to go through stuff. And when you go through it, then you've got the experience to speak with authority when it comes to like, this is, this can be overcome. This is how I overcame it. And I can help you or I can inspire you one or the other. So anyway, that's what she's here to do. Thank you for sharing that dream, Deidre. Now, I said that I would talk about Jesus, Martin Luther King Jr. and Michael Jackson at the beginning of the show. And I like to look to them because they spread the message of love in different ways. Jesus and Martin Luther King Jr. were true to their mission as teachers and leaders and did not hide themselves or ignore their inner guidance, even in the face of opposition that ultimately led to their deaths and the amount of compassion that they had for themselves and others was evident in the life that they lived. Michael Jackson is a little bit more controversial, but no matter where you lean on the side of this, his controversies, controversies, verses, controversies, the lyrics, the lyrics that he shared were often of love and many of them his songs were definitely divinely inspired for example he spoke wisdom when he sang i'm looking at the man in the mirror and i'm asking him to make a change no message could have been any clearer if you want to make the world a better place take a look at yourself and then make a change 